We started off making software to help people make awesome fan films. That was 13 years ago, back when The Phantom Menace came out. These days we make HitFilm 3 Express, which is entirely free and really powerful. In fact, it's so powerful you could say that it has unlimited power. HitFilm makes creating your own light sword effects as simple as possible. I'm Axel Wilkinson for HitFilm.com, and if you have just a few minutes, I'll show you how. The zip file that accompanies this tutorial contains the same project file and footage that I'm using, so you can follow along. In this project, the editor contains two clips. The first is a lightsaber ignition, and the second is a straightforward lightsaber blade. Let's start with the second one. To add effects, we want to convert the clip to a composite shot, so right-click it and choose Make Composite Shot. This will make it easier to build our visual effects. Don't worry about the options that pop up, just click OK. So now we have our video clip in a composite shot, or comp, and we could add the lightsaber effect directly to our video layer. But in general, it's best to keep your effects on separate layers, as this gives you greater control for adjusting the effect later. So from the New Layer menu, create a plane, make it black, and name it Blade. A plane is just a rectangular layer containing a solid color. Now, at the top of the Effects panel, type Light Sword into the search box, and you will see several Light Sword effects listed. For this tutorial, we will use the Two Point Auto option, so drag the Light Sword Two Point Auto effect onto the plane we just created. The Controls panel is where we can adjust all the properties of the effect to fine tune its appearance. In the Layer Properties, set the Blend Mode to Add. Blend modes control how the layers are combined, and Add is great for bright effects like light swords. It makes all black areas transparent, leaving only our effect. When you select the light sword effect, notice that we have two control points, one at each end. Drag the bottom one to the hilt end of the prop blade, and drag the top one to the tip. Lightsaber appearance is largely a matter of personal preference. Even in the previous Star Wars films, the size of the glow, the whiteness of the core, and the flicker of the blade all change significantly from one film to the next. We have three main elements to the effect. Core, inner glow, and outer glow. Keep the core color close to white. You can tint it slightly toward the blade color you choose, but you want it to be nice and bright. You can make the edges harder or softer with feather. I want mine soft, so I'll turn feather all the way up. If you play through the effect, you will notice that the width of the blade is not entirely stable. Stability controls this, so if you want the blade to be a consistent width, like in the prequels, increase stability. Or, if you prefer the look used in the original trilogy, reduce it. To smooth the edge of the blade out, turn the distortion down to zero. Inner Glow is the only glow turned on by default, but you can change the look by using both Inner and Outer Glow at different settings, to create a larger glow with more feathering. For Inner Glow, reduce the width to 35, to create a nice bright glow up tight against the core, and set the Alpha to 0.3. Drag the color up into Cyan. In the Outer Glow, increase the width to around 150, and increase the Alpha of the Outer Glow to about 0.55. Shift the color of the outer glow just a bit towards cyan. We can always adjust the glow later on if we want to change the appearance. Now, we need to animate the position of the blade so it follows our prop. This part is always going to be somewhat tedious, but HitFilm makes it as fast and as simple as possible. It's actually easier to see what we are doing if we turn off the visibility of the effect. Use the menu at the bottom right corner of the viewer to zoom in. When you are zoomed in, you can hold the right mouse button to drag your view around in the viewer panel. Turn on keyframing for the hilt and tip position properties by clicking the circle next to those properties' names. HitFilm can now use keyframes to record the position of the effect at each frame to create motion. Now advance four frames using the period key. You can use the pointy brackets on the comma and period keys to move one frame at a time in either direction. Move the effect to the new position by dragging the two control points. Notice that new keyframes are created for the properties on the timeline. Now scrub through the skipped frames and check the alignment. If it needs adjusting, add another keyframe in the middle. Then advance another four frames or so and repeat the process. 
Since the motion in this footage is somewhat slow, we can actually skip quite a few frames, and HitFilm's keyframing will handle those frames for us. If you have footage where the light sword is moving faster and the blade is blurred, line up the points with the front edge of the blur, and the auto portion of this effect, mentioned in its name, will kick in to automatically blur the effect to the proper width. We continue this process until we are through the footage. Jump forward, set keyframes, then check back in the frames we skipped and fine-tune things as needed. When the end of the blade goes out of frame, just position the tip point right outside the frame in line with the blade. I've sped this process up a bit to save time, but it actually goes fairly quickly once you get a rhythm. At actual speed, this scene took less than five minutes. Okay, now the animation is complete, and we can turn the light sword effect back on. Zoom back out and play through your footage, and if all has gone well, it tracks nicely along with the prop. When the blade is mid-swing, you can see that HitFilm is automatically fanning the effect a bit, but it is pretty subtle. If you want to increase the fanning effect, open the Auto Scale Persistence controls and set the speed threshold to 0.6. This fanning is automatically calculated by HitFilm based on how fast the blade is moving, so it only appears when it should. And now, I see you have constructed your own lightsaber effect. Your skills are complete. You can use this exact same process on your own footage and change the color of the glow or the blade appearance to anything you need. You can also combine effects to get a different look. Let's try that with two copies of this light sword effect. Right click and duplicate, and this gives us a new effect with the exact same animation and glow settings as our first one. So we don't need to keyframe the position again, it's already good to go. But we can change the glow settings so the two copies combine to give more depth to the effect. Let's right click and rename this one secondary. Then we will adjust the core and glow settings. Set the core width to 60%. On the inner glow, set width to 80, alpha to 0.4, and drag the color down toward blue just a little. For outer glow, set width to 250 and alpha to 0.37. Now toggle the secondary effect on and off to see what a difference it makes. Layering up your effects like this is not essential, but it does make a big difference. You can decide for yourself what approach you want to take. Now let's take a look at our other clip of a lightsaber ignition. Switch back to the editor, then convert that clip to a composite shot. Remember, right click on the clip and choose Make Composite Shot. Now. For the sake of our Jedi, we want the ignition to happen after the lightsaber prop is out of her robes. So, at the point when the ignition occurs, the prop isn't moving very much at all, and most of the hilt is visible. That makes this shot an excellent candidate for motion tracking, which is a huge time saver. Now, create a new point layer from the new layer menu. Points are not visible in the final video, they just serve as references for positioning other layers or effects. In this case, the point will be used to store the tracking data we create. Right-click the point and rename it to Hilt. Create a second point and name it Tip. Now, move the playhead to the last frame of the clip, open the layer on the timeline, and click the Insert Tracker button. Zoom in to 200% so we can see exactly what we are doing. I'll show you the basics as I set this up, but for more detailed information on using the tracker, we have a tutorial specifically on that topic. We have two boxes. The red one is the feature that is being tracked, and the larger green one is the search area. Move the feature so it sits over the silver emitter tip of the hilt. Keep it small. The point in the center is the actual location of the tracking data. Move it so it sits out past the edge of the hilt where the blade will come out. Now, in the track panel, Change the type to Double Points. Position the second tracker so it sits over the pommel of the hilt, and make it a bit smaller as well. With two points, the software can calculate the angle of the prop as well as its position. Now click the button to track backward and let it run until it stops. With tracking, if your feature wasn't identical to mine in shape and size, you might get slightly different results. Open the two trackers on the timeline so you can see their keyframes. Hopefully, you have a decent track until about 1.06. If yours got lost before then, find the frame where it wanders off, reposition it to the right spot, then start tracking again.
Any keyframes to the left of 106 are unnecessary, so you can select and delete them. Now, in step two of the track panel, choose Hilt for the layer and enable rotation. Switch from the layer tab, where our tracking is done, back to the viewer tab where we can see our entire composite shot, and when we click apply, all the position data stored in our tracking keyframes is assigned to our Hilt point layer. Now we need to add our lightsaber effect. Remember, we want to put it on a separate layer. To keep it consistent with our first lightsaber, let's just click the tab to switch back to the swinging composite shot, and right click and copy our blade layer. Switch back to our ignition comp, and paste. Drag the layer to the start of the timeline, then grab the right edge and extend it until it matches the length of our clip. Now we have our lightsaber effects layer, we just need to position the effect using our tracking data. Disable the secondary effect on the blade layer, and open the controls for the remaining one. Click the blue circle to disable keyframing for the hilt position and tip position properties, and this will remove all the existing keyframes. Now, assign the hilt and tip to their respective point layers. Zero out the positions so they line up, using Tab to move from one field to the next. Move the tip point layer so that it lines up with the hilt and looks about the right length. We don't have a prop reference for the tip, so to keep it properly aligned, use this menu to parent it to the hilt point. Once it is parented, it will move with the hilt point and stay where we need it. Now in the lightsaber effect controls, on frame 106, enable keyframing for the extension property. It is currently set to 100% or fully extended. Set it to zero, so the blade is fully retracted. Now, move forward five frames, and set extension to 100. You can adjust how quickly the blade extends by changing the number of frames between the 0% and 100% keyframes. The extension property makes it super easy to animate ignition or deactivation of a light sword. Now we need to set up our secondary effect. So turn it on, and once again deactivate keyframing for the position of the hilt and tip. Zero out the position, and assign them to the same point layers for the hilt and tip. This will automatically line up that effect as well with the tracking data we've created. We need to animate the extension for this one also, so on frame 106, enable keyframing for extension on the secondary, set it to zero, then advance five frames, and set it to 100. Now our blade is looking all awesome and whatnot. Not as clumsy or random as a blaster, a more elegant weapon for a more civilized age. But when a blade ignites, there is usually a bit of a flare, so let's create that to finish off our scene. To do this, we will use one more light sword effect. Let's just duplicate the first effect and rename this copy Flare. Drag it to the top of our effects stack just to keep things organized. Open the tip controls and assign the tip position to the hilt point. Now both ends of this effect are assigned to the same point, so they will create a bright glow right at the hilt's emitter. To make it bigger, slam the width on both the hilt and tip controls all the way up to 50. Then increase the width of the inner glow to 205, and the outer glow width to 335. We will keyframe the width of the core to control the overall effect. Double click the first keyframe of the extension property to move the playhead to its position, then set the core width to 200% and enable keyframing. Then advance 5 frames and set the core width to 0 so it disappears completely. That's all there is to creating the ignition flare. And there you have it. No more training do you require. Already know you that which you need. But if you want more training, we do have another tutorial that looks at the light sword effects in HitFilm further. The techniques we used here can be applied to your own lightsaber footage as well. Whether the blades are relatively stationary and can be tracked, or are moving quickly and need to be rotoscoped by hand, HitFilm gives you the tools to make stunning results as easy and as fast as possible. So be fearless and inventive with combining effects and trying different settings, and the Force will be with you, always. If you have been seduced by the dark side of the Force, then make sure you check out our tutorial on creating Force Lightning in HitFilm as well.